Hi all, I have another fascinating game of Leela Chess against Houdini 6. This is on a 15 1 time control, so 15 moves at the rate of 1 minute each. So e4 from Leela Chess, and we have e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, the two knights defense, now knight g5, d5. This is a pretty standard gambit. Bishop b5 check, c6, takes, takes. The bishop drops back to e2, h6, and now quite often knight f3 is played, but also this is the second choice uh, move in live book, uh, dating back to Steinitz. So bishop c5, both sides castle, d3, knight b7, knight c3. So, so far, it's a position which is thought to uh, be good compensation for black. A lot of peace activity. But structurally, you'll note that there's uh, a couple of fragmented pawns here on the queen side. King h1, which makes way for knight g1. So, try to improve that piece on h3. Improving the worst piece. So, knight g1, rook e8. White's position looks a little bit on the flat side. It's trying to... Uh, take the pressure from the black pieces here. Bishop d4, bishop b2. This is the first tactical test of white's position. White can neutralize the pressure on this occasion. Bishop takes, knight takes, queen c7. And now f3. So yes, white is occupying just the first three ranks here. And the bishop doesn't seem to be inspiring at the moment. Too much confidence after playing f3. It does lock against the e4 break though. So white's interested in stopping all potential pawn breaks from black, it seems. c5, queen d2, knight d4. Rook a, e1, bishop f5, bishop d1, bishop g6, knight e2, knight d5, knight c4. This is a very nice knight outpost. Because of the fragmented pawns, it seems more solid than usual. It's very difficult to sort of do something about that knight for a moment. Uh, putting pressure on e5 so f6 supporting e5 more exchanges on the way knight c3 white is basically soaking up the tactical pressure and just accentuating black's isolated pawns really in the long term however white remains for the moment a little bit awkwardly pl placed so king g1 here knight e6 queen a5 gaining uh, an in interesting square for the queen driving the, the black queen to c6 uh, we have rook f2, h5. Black seems to be interested in having knight f4, uh, a knight on f4, very dangerous looking knight on f4. Now bishop e2, the bishop heads for f1. <coughs> Pardon me. So we have h4, queen d2, knight f4. Now the bishop on f1 means that g3 can be used to evict that knight on f4. We have rook e4, bishop d5, the rook goes back, bishop f7, g3, knight h5, rook g2, bishop d5, and this is slightly awkward for white, uh, this pressure it seems. Uh, if black hadn't done bishop d5, then say this position, there's actually rook e4 hitting h4, this position could be quite nice for white if white gets to double the rooks like this white will have an advantage so black is keen not to let white do this sort of stuff so this forcing move is played and here i wonder if you can guess what leader chess plays in this position if i give you five seconds to pause the video what would you play here Okay, I can only describe this as a Petrosian-esque. Tigran Petrosian was a fan of exchange sacks. Here, it actually is, is it seems like a really a good one here. Uh, so offering the exchange. Now, black did take that. And before we, we have a look at this position, let's look at some options. Uh, why rookie four? So why, why rookie four here? If rook f2, then that neglects g3, as well as actually f3 st still seems to be uh, 
able to be taken. So this possession is is quite nice for black. There's no real uh, problem here for black. Uh, but if we look at queen f2 as an alternative, uh, then that's a total disaster. H3 winning the rook, even if, uh, or yeah, just looking at uh, total disasters. Uh, bishop e2 though isn't such a disaster as a, a pawn sacrifice idea goes. Uh, this position is actually fairly nice for white. This position. Uh, it will basically be uh, inviting a little bit more simplification there at the cost of that pawn. And um, white stands okay there. Uh, another pawn sack idea, queen e3, and if black took this position, for example, is quite pleasant, and white will even get the pawn back there. So this this is actually, and there's also ideas of bishop e2, so if bishop here, maybe bishop e2. So it's there's interesting dynamic stuff available for, for white involving sacking the f3 pawn as well. But this is this is interesting. This is really interesting. Bishop takes, f takes. Now this knight is a target to bishop e2. That's an immediate concern here, bishop e2. Uh, so once this knight was sitting proudly on f4, and now it's just it's uh, liability, it seems. So black plays uh, rook, not rook, B, bc8. Black tries to sort of head off bishop e2 by playing king f7. Uh, to be able to answer, you know, bishop e2 with things like uh, rook h8. If we have this as an example, bishop e2, this is just horrible uh, because white could take on h5, install the queen on h6, ready for g takes. It's just horrible. You can clearly see that black's king is actually getting in big trouble in this variation, and black's getting dismantled. So this is a big threat, basically. It's a big concrete threat, bishop e2. So king f7 is played. Um, there, there's also a fascinating uh, possibility, by the way. Let's have a look at f5 as well. Very, very aggressive to give the knight f6. So bishop e2, knight f6. The problem here, this is really interesting. Uh, there's an interesting move which caught me uh, by in shock in the variations out of the queen g5, rook e7. I uh, guess what resource white would have in this position. Uh, so this bishop has been asleep for most of this game. But guess what resource, which kind of really is aggressive here. What would you play here if I give you five seconds? This is just a variation to test your, I don't know, piece aggressiveness. <laughs> Believe it or not, d4. So even though the pawn can be captured both ways, it's about this diagonal. This is actually nice for white. For example, like this, the bishop's going to go to c4. So that's a very nice variation. Big advantage for white. Doesn't doesn't matter if e d either. Um, knight e5 with the idea of bishop c4. So the bishop can get to be a monster potentially. Black has to be wary about that as well. So f5 is not exactly a great uh, solution. It seems um, there's evidence to suggest that's not a great solution. So. Let's go back. So in this position, king f7, bishop e2, rook h8. And now uh, the bishop's actually taken out of the picture, taken off for that knight. So we have what seems to be uh, a kind of Trojan style fortress position where the rooks uh, don't seem to have any entry points in the near or long term future, in fact. Uh, you can't it doesn't seem as though visually there's a way of doing anything with the rooks so at least white has a super solid position with nearly sort of zero it seems losing chances white is keeping control against the f5 break uh, this does seem to be yeah now after g5 there's it's like saying goodbye to the possibility of f5 maybe black had a concern about g5 and knight g4 uh, so this this f5 is now gone. So black's breaks are disappearing rapidly here. The pawn structure is locked. So that's a great form of prophylaxis, locking down black's pawn structure, uh, safeguarding against any concerns of pawn breaks. And here, actually, black plays rook d4, offering the exchange back to knight f5 check. You might wonder, well, didn't black have any patience at all? Let's have a look. This position, instead of rook d4, which invites knight f5, if we look at this position, 
It does seem to be a, a fairly standard fortress. I'm not sure White either has a great deal of winning prospect. This is just the sample. I think it's a bit fortressy and a bit drawish potentially. Uh, so, but anyway, so Black kind of forced the issue here with Rook D4, inviting White to get the exchange back. Uh, so here though, there's B4 and there's a two to one pawn majority now. Uh, if Black had captured the other way, then maybe that, by the way, introduces other issues. Uh, Rook takes this probably Queen G8 check is, is at least a perpetual check or worse. So we have this C takes, so we've got this two to one uh, pawn majority here. And in fact, uh, here after B5, uh, Black again seems to go a little bit nuts impatiently. Maybe Black can play King G7, and it's actually difficult. Even though White has the two to one pawn majority, I check this out, and really, I'm not entirely sure uh, it's that easy to do anything with the pawn majority. Um, I think as soon as Queen Queen B4, for example, I think there might be like A5. Uh, if, if you're interested in pushing for a5 it might be more tricky than it seems anyway but the way black played it a little bit of sort of impatience here it seems a6 and essentially this leads to a position after b takes where black tries to get that pawn back now uh, now there's still issues of queen g8 if rook takes uh, so black's trying to avoid that as well and the queens come off basically for this rook and pawn ending but here, uh, White has a simple plan of getting the king into the action on the queen side with c3, getting access to the queen side. So black is basically in a lost rook and pawn ending. That's right, Leela Chas is just completely positionally outplaying now Houdini 6 at this fast time control. So the intuition of Leela is absolutely staggering. So yeah, uh, swapping the a pawn for f6 weakens both e5 and g5 so these pawns are falling off like ripe apples yep take a look at these apples they're falling off so after king e7 uh, it was adjudicated here as a, a whim for white so i thought that was a fascinating side of leela chess 464 the sort of petrosian hat in this game except soaking up the pressure simplification uh, the issue of the knight on f4 sort of backfired in a way with this exchange sack it seems as though white was then able to suppress all potential pawn breaks and at least have a fortress style draw but black got impatient and ended up going into uh, a more simplified position and then ended up going into a lost rook and pawn inning through further it seems like impatience like an impatient character who's only six here in this game uh so going heading for that very very bad rook and pawn ending so a fascinating encounter i uh, hope you got something from it comments questions like shares appreciated thanks so much